I'll turn it over to KTool and um, enjoy the presentation. Thank you, Mr. McGoy. So, of course, as uh, he said, we're going to be talking about simulation and its ability to use non-uniform pressure or force loading scenarios. So let's uh, take this and continue on. Now, first thing, let's talk about what uniform loading is, and we'll talk about non-uniform loading, of course. Now, majority of you guys know this already. This is not a very difficult concept because you see it every single day. Uh, and so it's just a force or pressure that is, of course, one constant in magnitude uh, and also direction as well. Now, uh, when this thing is applied in on a space a vertex uh, or even an edge, it's the same all the way through from one side to the other side. There is no variation over the entire entity. And for the sake of this presentation, we're going to make sure that it's also not varying over uh, time as well. So if you'd like to know that, of course, uh, please just chat it in, but uh, that's not what we're going to talk about today. And very simple examples of this is like a box sitting on a table, for instance, the weight of an object, you know, things that you would see in a supermarket, right, just gravity loading, uh, frictional resistance, bolts, uh, attaching two objects together, uh, clamping force like the engine block or anything else that you've ever clamped in a, or put together or squeezed together, those are all considered uh, uniform loading uh, scenarios because as uh, the definition goes. Now, let's take a look at non-uniform loading. Non-uniform loading, of course, uh, the pressure or the force will change over a certain direction. And that, of course, direction is supplied by the coordinate system that we supply, or that we give it, and the function that we give it as well. So it changes in magnitude, and uh, it can also change with the direction of uh, that you choose. So uh, it is going to be different all the way through the entire geometry that you select. Now it can change in one direction and two, or even three directions at the same time. So. Uh, of course, that also depends on the equation that you or the function that you su uh, supply. One which is very uh, prevalent that you would also know is uh, hydrostatic pressure, like a fish tank or a dam, uh, like the Hoover Dam. So as the water is kind of filling up, the pressure on the bottom is, of course, higher than the pressure on the top of the water where, it's, where it is zero. And to make sure that uh, we supply that, you know, that increase in pressure, we need to supply an equation for it. Also, things that uh, you've seen as well, like airflow around an object, right? Uh, golf ball being uh, hit through uh, the air, the baseball, football, you name it, any type of balls that go through aircraft as well. Uh, also, kind of uh, catastrophic issues as well, which we've seen in the past few years, is that wind loading. Uh, the wind can also push uh, items down and it changes over that geometry. So uh, that can also vary. And we're going to take a look at what wind loading can do uh, on objects as well and how we can vary it inside of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so let's take a look at the different ways we can set that up. So we have a Cartesian coordinate system, cylindrical, and a spherical coordinate system. Uh, we all know what the Cartesian, the XYZ is, uh, and the cylindrical coordinate system. We're dealing with a radial uh, direction, a circumferential, and an axial direction. And then, of course, radial, longitudinal, and uh, latitude uh, direction. So it's going to change over those two angles. So T and P are basically angles. Circumferential for T is also an angle that it's going to be changing over. So first things first, let's talk about the Cartesian coordinate system, right? These, this is one of your most basic ones, your X, Y, Z, that you've seen um, throughout your lifetime. So this is not a very difficult one to, uh, to understand. And so our fish tank that we're going to uh, model up and we're going to analyze it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the water uh, or the water pressure uh, increase as the depth goes, uh, as the depth increases. So our current depth is just going to be a half a meter uh, long, so nothing too high. Of course, it is just a fish tank. And so uh, that pressure is going to be dictated, and the, the magnitude of that pressure is going to be dictated by this equation, right? The pressure equals the, the density of the water times the gravity times the depth of the water. 
a very simple equation, uh, but we want to make sure that that pressure increases uh, as we go further and further down uh, the tank. And so let's take a look at that and what that's going to bring up. So I have here a basic fish tank that's uh, been modeled up. And we'll, for the sake of our um, uh, simulation, we're going to ignore the, the base. We're going to ignore the lighting apparatus at the top because, again, we're only wor worried about what the water is going to do. So whatever uh, geometry the water makes contact to, that's the only thing that we're going to analyze. And so the next aspect of this is to set up a uh, a coordinate system in a very specific location that will help you create that uh, that pressure loading. So this is done inside of SolidWorks, all right, not inside of SolidWorks simulation. So you would come in, so if you have a part file or an assembly file, you would just come into the reference geometry and set up the coordinate system as, a, uh, as I've done here. So let's just take a quick gander at that because it is important. Now when we set up our coordinate system, uh, you can use many different types of uh, edges, points to help you locate that coordinate system properly. The limitation here uh, is that it's all in X, Y, Z, so it's all in Cartesian, So, and this cannot be changed. So when, we, uh, when I said that we can set up a cylindrical and a spherical coordinate system, that's going to be done in the simulation aspect, uh, in the simulation features, not inside the SOLIDWORKS features. So this is kind of locked in here. So, which is fine, because all we really are looking for is a direction, right, that we need to make sure that SOLIDWORKS changes. So let's come back and take a look at how we set that all up here. So I have a, a very simple study that I've set up. And what I'm going to do first is, again, get rid of all of the excess geometry that is not being tested because we're just going to assume that it's going to be stronger and it's going to be able to withhold the weight of the water. Now, we have the top and the bottom rails. Those are going to be made of uh, ABS. And then we have the glass that uh, is going to be modeled with uh, the cube that we have here. And we are using uh, shell elements, so we don't care about, you know, we're going to assume that uh, we're going to let solvers extra uh, extrapolate the data through the thickness. We don't need to mesh all of that all together. And everything is going to be glued together, so we're just going to bond it together. That's just the way it is in real life, so it may, makes that very easy. The other assumption that we're going to make, now this can be different for any way you would set this up in real life. These are just the assumptions I'm making, which may or may not be true for every fish tank that's ever been out there. Okay, so this is uh, just an assumption, but it helps me to move the uh, simulation along. That's the only reason I did it this way. So I've said that uh, that that geometry in blue is not going to move up or down. All right, so we're going to restrict its uh, uh, movement here. Then we're also going to uh, restrict its movement in all directions around this vertex right here. So we're kind of fixing that from moving in, in the plane of the ZX direction. Now, secondly, and this is the assumption that I'm making here, is that this vertex right here is not going to be able to move uh, along the Z direction. So. The reason I'm doing it this way is because I don't want this thing to rotate or hinge or have a moment uh, generated uh, around this fixed scenario or fixed uh, vertex here. So I'm just restricting it in that direction. Again, it's just an assumption, so it's quite all right. You can fix it, uh, fix your geometry in whatever way you like. It's just an assumption that we're making right now. Now, at this point, let's go ahead and uh, check out that water pressure. So I have a a pressure that's uh, being generated on all of the faces that you see here, including the bottom as well. And so we have now a, the non-uniform distribution of the pressure that we specify. And so we have our different coordinate systems that we can choose from, and then the equation that they're based on. And again, we have our coordinate system that we created, and y is positive downward. So it's going to increase uh, the pressure in the downward direction. So we've set up our equation here such that the force that we've, calc uh, that we've inputted here will be multiplied by the height, or the depth in this case, of the fish tank. So as, the, uh, as we get lower and lower, the pressure will increase. Now the uh, 9812, that's just the uh, rho g. 
so the density times the gravity, and so that's what you're really seeing here. All right, so this is very simple to understand because, again, SOLIDWORKS has also told us that they're, what they're going to do is they're going to take this number and multiply it by this value based on this equation right here, where you have the pressure times the force or the direction of that force. So very simple setup as far as the water pressure and how, that's, uh, how that is being developed through the, uh, the tank itself. All right, so let's take a look at some of the results that we have here. We have our displacement. Again, it's just a very simple set of water over the tank, and we have only a 2.2 millimeter displacement of the glass and the plastic itself. It's reasonable enough to have that move that much, and it's fine. Now, the next, the next aspect of this is how much stress is being developed, because it will displace, right, glass is able to move, uh, but we also don't uh, want this glass to break. Now, glass is not a ductile material like aluminum and steel, it's a brittle material, so it's going to reach a certain point, and then it's just going to shatter, right? So we need to know what that is. So, so uh, I've created a, very, a separate material for the glass, and I've specified a certain tensile and compressive strength here. So let me change it from IPS so that the numbers look a little bit easier to understand. So it's very simple now that we have a tensile strength of 70, compressive strength of 120 uh, megapascal. So, uh, we have to make sure that we don't surpass those numbers. So because, again, this is glass, and we're let's take a look at the tensile strength. So which means that we're going to have to take a look at the first principal stress, P1 stresses on this tank, because we cannot surpass 70 megapascal. And we have here right around 21.6 megapascal. So we're within almost uh, three factors of safety, so we're uh, right, you know, very safe as far as the tank is concerned, so we're fine with this. Now, uh, that's, that's it for the tank. Now, this is a very simple setup of a Cartesian coordinate system uh, for the pressure. All right, so now let's jump back in. And let's take a look at the cylindrical coordinate system. So here, uh, we are going to have a, cil uh, a cylinder, and so we're going to have a radial direction, a circumferential direction, which will be the surface of the cylinder, as you can see, uh, and then the z-direction is just the axial direction. So here's the setup. We're going to take a look at a, a, just a simple tank, like a, a, a gas tank that you would kind of see, a propane tank, one of those large cylindrical ones. That's it. So imagine that. So we have a 90 mile an hour wind that's going to hit this tank from a uh, from the Z direction or the left direction here, and so we have to set up the force that is distributed uh, that will mimic what the wind is going to do over that geometry. Now, what I've done here is I've taken this assembly and I've done a, a simple flow analysis and I've calculated that the the pressure that the wind is going to generate is going to be 0.2 psi at the maximum location. So that's where you see uh, the 0.2 uh, psi. Now, uh, you'll see the arrows are kind of getting smaller from the, uh, the zero x direction, and it's going to get smaller as it goes all the way to the y. So that's where you have zero psi at the top and zero psi at the bottom. Now, this is an assumption that we're making. So the assumption here is that the flow is laminar all the way through. There is no turbulence being generated here. The wind is flowing over it, and there is, uh, it's not vibrating or anything like that. So because it's uh, laminar, that's why we're assuming it's zero, and that's done uh, based on a simple equation so that the, as the wind goes over, we want to make sure that the angle uh, is determined to be zero at that top and the bottom. So. Uh, so what I mean by this is, is that let's, if we assume zero uh, at this level, as we go up here, the cosine of pi over two is going to be zero, but the cosine of zero is one. So the pressure that we have, 0.2, is going to be maximum at this location and zero at this location. So it's now we're getting to trigonometry, but that's kind of the whole aspect of using uh, different types of coordinate systems. So let's jump right into SOLIDWORKS and take a look at that. So I have this tank, 
And the, of course, the wind is going to come in from the positive Z direction. I've ran a flow simulation. That's what you're seeing right off the bat here uh, uh, for this. And that's what we've calculated to be on this tank. So if I were to take a quick uh, look at the pressure, the relative pressure, which means the ambient minus the uh, I'm going to show it. The ambient minus the the actual pressure generated by the wind hitting the surface, that's right around 0.2189. So it's close enough. We can assume 0.2 for that uh, PSI for this. So this is the uh, the calculation from the flow analysis. Now we'll take that and actually apply it to uh, the actual simulation for it. All right, oh, bear with me here as I just turn this off for the time being. We don't need to see. the flow analysis aspect. All right, so we have a very simple tank. Everything's going to be made out of alloy steel, and uh, everything's to be bonded together. All right, bear with me here. We want this study. Everything is going to be bonded together uh, with a weld or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I'm just going to fix the bottom regions. And I'm going to supply the pressure only on this surface geometry here, because once the wind uh, passes over, uh, it's not going to create any more drag. So that geometry, we can ignore that. Now, again, that's an assumption. We're ignoring it. You can actually include it if you like, but you'll just get different. You'll get a squeezing pressure at that point. So let's take a look at this pressure distribution that we have over these uh, these surfaces. So we're going to take that calculated value from our flow simulation of 0.2 psi, and we're going to create a an equation for the uh, cylindrical coordinate system. Now, the coordinate system you can see right here is at the very center of our geometry. And the z is the axial, and that will, that's what we have here. And then we calculate it out based on the t direction. So that's what you're seeing. And this SOLIDWORKS does give you a nice little picture here telling you that this is the angle that we're changing, and it's just going to be multiplied by this value here. All right. So as the uh, pressure, as the wind goes over the geometry, it's going to create less and less pressure. So with that being done, we can then take a look at the, the displacement and the stresses due to all of this. So this you can see here, it's 1.3 e to the negative 3. So it's very small. So it's almost a thousandth of an inch, nothing at all. But it is steel, so we expect that. And then the stresses, of course, uh, due to the wind will only be around the geometry that's being bonded or glued together. So that's very minimum, minimal stress for alloy steel. Now, we can include internal pressures in this uh, everything else as well, but we didn't at this point. This is just to see what the wind loading is going to do to this geometry and not include the internal pressures. If you did want to, you can run a uh, pressure vessel uh, study and make sure that it is safe uh, to, and secure for that reason as well. But again, these are just assumptions, but it's able to create uh, all of these different, different pressures uh, or loading scenarios here. Now, let's move on uh, from here, and let's take a look at these uh, spherical coordinates. All right, so where we have the radius of the, uh, the sphere, we have the longitudinal and latitude uh, angles for the spherical coordinate system. So what I'm going to have set up is, again, the same 90 mile an hour load over going over the dome. And we want to make sure that, you know, as the wind is uh, being wrapped around this dome, it's, again, still laminar. So we're going to assume that it's zero at the top and zero on the sides of the dome as well. So this is the equation that we kind of have set up here. So we have our P loading. P is that angle. And then uh, the T loading. So what we want to make sure that is as the wind goes around the sides and around the top, that this is the equation. Now, my mistake here is that this is supposed to be the, uh, the sine of P and the minus cosine of T. So that's just the way it's set up here. So that we get the uh, directional loading that we're, that we're wanting. Now, let's jump back into SOLIDWORKS and take a look at that type of a loading scenario. 
So we have kind of a cage set up, all right? And then we also have a glass set up over the top of this that is represented by just a very simple surface uh, that kind of goes over the, uh, the top here. So this is kind of the glass that we have set up. So it's a very simple geometry, much like an igloo. Uh, and then we kept out this hole just to make it a little bit different. All right, and so we have our pressure distribution. So we have our geometry. So all of the uh, circular tubes that you have, we're going to assume that they're going to be beams all the way around. And then we have our surface body that's uh, wrapped around those uh, items as well. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this is kind of the simulation for those of you who know uh, SOLIDWORKS simulation. Uh, because we're using shells and beams, we can have interference, and that's just perfectly fine. So it's good enough for what we're trying to do. All right, and so because it's a surface body, we've told SOLIDWORKS that the glass is going to be an eighth of an inch uh, thick, and it's going to be made out of a, a, just a wrapped nylon. All right, now, everything else is kind of bonded together to the glass, so all of the different regions of the geometry are going to be bonded to the glass so it doesn't move anywhere from it. Now. Here's the other assumptions. We're going to fix the bottom edge of the glass to the ground. And then we've also, uh, let me show you how that all comes through. So you can see that the, now, not only is the bottom edge fixed, but all the joints are kind of locked to the ground. So basically they're pinned to the ground, they're never going to move. So that's what's, uh, that's how the setup is done. Now, I've seen structures where the glass is just cosmetic and it's attached to the structure but not to the ground. You can choose how you want that to be set up. It's up to you. But this is just a very uh, simplistic way of looking at it, and that's, uh, you know, you could change it around if you wished. Our goal here is to set up a very, uh, set up a pressure distribution. So that's, that's why I didn't worry about attaching it to the structure. So we have our so a uh, spherical coordinate system with the same pressure that, you, that you're seeing here. And we have our equation that's going to go around uh, all of the different sides. So now we're changing the pressure over two different directions. And so with that pressure change, we have our stress distribution. And you can kind of see how that uh, is pushing on the glass as soon as it shows up here. You can see how it's pushing on the glass at a certain uh, PSI, which is not very much. It's only 0.2 PSI. And then also our displacement that's being generated by it. So a displacement on this glass is 0 0.04 inches. Nothing as far as it's concerned uh, for the wind loading. But because we wanted a laminar, we have to you know, work with what we got here. So this is be, uh, our spherical distribution. So you just have to work with the coordinate systems that you create. And the only difference is, is that when you, once you get into solidware simulation, that's when the transposition then is uh, done between the Cartesian, uh, which is what you have inside of SOLIDWORKS, uh, to the uh, different ones, cylindrical and spherical, inside of simulation. So that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to show you. I hope the information was useful. So if anyone has any questions, I'll be glad to uh, field them now. Um, OK, cool. Very nice presentation. Um, definitely makes me think about some of the things I can do with SOLIDWORKS and my day-to-day my -day simulation use. So there's definitely some, some interesting stuff in there that I could, I could use so designing some of my, the things I've got to do. So that's, that's pretty nice. Thank you.